Hi, it's Florian, and in this video I'm going to talk about how I became an engineer, how I struggled with my studies, how I was really lazy, and how I in the end still achieved a lot, and even became a PhD in the end. If you're interested about my PhD, I will link it down in the description, but in this video I'm going to give all of you an insight in how really lazy I was, and how you can achieve something despite of that. And for that I brought my certificates, so I studied in Germany and I have uh, a lot of German certificates, so my marks, my grade, my whatever. And I just walk you through my studies, uh, walk you through what I experienced and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I definitely enjoy it because it is pretty far away from me and uh, I am pretty successful in my job and my professional life, but I was not really successful when I studied and this might show you that. So I studied uh, electrical engineering in Germany and uh, what you need to understand in this video is that in Germany, uh, one, when I studied it in 1999, there was no master's and bachelor's degree, there was just a diploma and you could choose going to a four-year diploma or to a five-year diploma and the five-year was uh, one where you could do a PhD afterwards and four-year usually not. I chose the five-year of course because I thought I was smart and clever and not not only that, I also chose one of the top universities in Germany and um, I didn't really think about it. I didn't really think about what an engineer does. I didn't really think about why I studied electrical engineering and not mechanical engineering or construction engineering or whatever. I had no idea. I was completely misinformed. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what an engineer can do in the end and I just started. And that is, you could say, one of the biggest mistakes or maybe even one of the biggest risks that I took is doing this without being informed. Because when I studied, or when I started studying, I actually figured out that studying electrical engineering at one of the top universities is a pain, it is hard, I struggled, and it is even harder if you have no idea what to do with it. So I actually started studying and I had to learn all these fundamentals. And in the study you had to have four semesters of fundamentals and six semesters of um, specialization you could choose then. And the grades in Germany go from one to five, where one is the best and five means you failed. So one to four is you passed. And I just want to read to you what I did in the first, um, in the first uh, four semesters and how I did that. It was horrible. So I didn't have any grade that is better than a three. I just had threes and fours in my uh, pre-diploma. That's how it was called. It was so bad. So I, I had no idea what I was getting into when I studied. I had no idea what to do with it. Uh, and then in addition, I had a girlfriend who is now my wife. So uh, it turned out also pretty well, but that doesn't help if you struggle already and I was very lazy so I usually in the first one or two semesters I went to the lectures but then I basically just learned from from old um, tests old exams uh, for writing the new ones so I did the exercises and I read some kind of the scripts that you uh, got from colleagues or whatever but I didn't go there so I had a lot of time um, with my girlfriend, playing computer, whatever, um, just hanging out with friends. So I, I, did, I didn't do a lot and um, I didn't know what you can achieve in the end. So I, I, I didn't want to fail, so I had these threes and fours, so nothing better than a three. So basically I just went through this pre-diploma and uh, very bad. So all the fundamentals like electrical engineering, fundamentals, physics, mathematics, it's all threes and fours, um, uh, electronics, also a three, energy technology, year four, uh, even the easy stuff uh, like information science and, and uh, digital design and so on, also a four. So I, I was very bad. And some of them I even had to do twice because I uh, failed the first attempt and for example the, the 
fundamentals of electrical engineering B. It's about Fourier transform, Laplace transform, C transform, and all of these field stuff, electromagnetic fields. I was very bad at it, and I thought I would never need it again. And that's wrong, so I need it again, but uh, at that time I didn't know. And I was really struggling. Um, I'm not someone who quits things, that's why I continued. I guess if I would be more of a quitter, I would have not continued studying this, because I didn't see the point in it in the end. I had no idea where to come, where to go, and I had also no idea why, why I should continue. So uh, there was some time in the, I guess, fourth or fifth semester where I didn't really know why I was doing that. I could also have uh, switched to, I would say, the, the easier university that is just four years or to to something completely different like business administration or whatever. But I also didn't know what to do else. So I didn't quit. I continued because I didn't have any alternative. And what I did, I, I learned so that I didn't fail, which is sometimes hard because it's hard to find the point where you just fail or don't fail. And um, that's why I failed sometime. And I was bad. I was very bad. And uh, after four semesters, or after five semesters, I took one longer because I didn't pass some of these things. I had to choose what to uh, specialize on. And there were a lot of um, a lot of options. So energy technology, theoretical electrical engineering, uh, microelectronics, uh, tactical computer science, whatever. So all of these you could you could choose from, and I I had still no idea because I was bad at all of that. So <laughs> there was nothing where I could say yeah that's better than the other stuff because uh, I'm I'm pretty good at that, but I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't good at anything at that time, and um, the only thing I knew is I didn't want to do all these complicated calculations where you calculate formulas over two or three lines in your on your sheet. Uh, one formula, and that's I didn't want to do that again. And theoretical e uh, electrical engineering and, and all of that, I didn't want to do that. So I actually specialized in the computer science, technical computer science stuff, um, where I had a four in in my basic studies, and uh, I was, and I wasn't um, working harder than before. So I started doing this uh, specialized studies, and I was still a lazy as, you know, and. It, it of course wasn't better. So uh, then I I, I did this um, 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 specialized studies, which actually count to your mark in the end. It's like your master's degree. So you had to write to do uh, a lot of uh, lectures, and then you had to write something which was called a study thesis and the diploma thesis. And one is you can compare the one with a bachelor and the other with a master thesis nowadays. And I. Yeah, I didn't study very fast, so you could choose what to do when. There was not really an, a, a real time point where you had to finish it. You could go on forever, basically. And I went on like I left my basic studies. I was happy that I made it through my basic studies, because that I wasn't sure about that either. And since I chose basically randomly also the, the specialization, I also randomly did the um, stuff there and, and it continued like that. So even the easy things where I know now it was very easy, I had threes and fours, it is always the same. And now you might wonder, um, how can someone who was so lazy and so bad do a PhD in the end and even make it through his studies? And there was one point in my I would say student life that changed everything for me and uh, this point was when I you know when we studied we had to do um, an internship for six months total eight weeks when in your basic studies and the rest in your um, in your specialization and I did a five month internship um, at Thales which is an aerospace company 
and defense. Um, five months uh, because I had to. I wouldn't have done it if I wouldn't have to, but I had to, so I went there. Um, and that was the best thing I could do because it showed me, first of all, that I'm not stupid. Because if you have all of these bad marks, you think, yeah, maybe the others are more smarter than I am. Um, but uh, the guy who, who was there gave me some tasks to uh, program RAM algorithms and to um, do some formulas. All of this hard stuff that I didn't do when I studied. Uh, it was high linear algebra and, and all of that. And um, he thought I, it would take me five months, but it basically took me five weeks to finish what he wanted me to do. Because at that time, you know, if you work, you just have to sit there for eight, for eight hours and do something. That never happened to me before. Before I just had the choice to do anything I wanted to, but in the, during this internship I had just ha I had to be there and I had to do that, and it was fun actually. I, I saw the results. I saw something happening. My boss was very happy with me because I was so quick. And after that, uh, after finishing it, I did some uh, 3D programming in C++ where you could see radar screens in 3D and the Earth with satellites around it and so on. Uh, that was fun, uh, actually. I, I enjoyed it very much. And it showed me that I actually wasn't stupid. And if I uh, worked hard, I could achieve something. And it also showed me what you actually have to do when once you become an engineer. Because before I didn't know. I had no idea. That's why I thought, why, why am I doing that anyway? I was really struggling. And I went back from this internship to, to basically going on to study. And um, I was making a plan, when to finish which subjects, when do I do my two theses that I still had to write. And from that time point on, I was very good. So before I had just threes and fours, basically all of the time. And then I just had ones and twos, so the best two marks and never anything else. Uh, the only thing where I got a four was uh, theoretical electrical engineering, which is Maxwell and Fields and so on. I was never good at that. But the rest, I just had ones and twos. So I came from being the worst student to being one of the best students, just because I did this internship. And just because I knew that now I'm... That's, it's actually a good idea to study that and that I'm good at it once I finish. So from there on, I finished pretty quickly and I finished extremely good. So I had the only the best marks, um, was only always at the top, uh, of my, not the top of my class, but the top, I would say five to 10%. And uh, also my, my studies in the end, one was uh, doing a PCI controller and the host bridge in VHDL it was also very good and it worked in the end. And the other one, the diploma thesis was some uh, reconfigurable processing. Um, and also very good. So I finished basically everything afterwards with very good or good, which uh, of course then improved my, the mark that I got in the end to a two. It ha would have been a three otherwise, and that would have not so good not, been not so good because you can't do a PhD if you are worse than a two in the end. And actually, I was so good that um, people or my, my supervisor from my diploma thesis even asked me if I wanted to do a PhD, uh, which I declined because I wanted to work. I've had so much fun doing this internship. I wanted to just work and then uh, earn money. Um, but I then returned to the PhD. And if you want to know more about it, watch the other video. But I will um, basically tell you what I learned from it. And what I learned is a lot of stuff that I tell you right now. Uh, or in my other videos. And I didn't follow any of these at the beginning and that was wrong. So one of the things you should always uh, do is plan ahead. Whenever you start a, something you study, something you want to bring to a, a large part of your life, not only during your studies, but also after it, think about what you can do with it afterwards. Ask people, inf get informed, do an internship, whatever. Don't just study like I did. That's very risky because you might be frustrated and that doesn't help you. Um, and of course, 
mitigate risk. Whatever you do, mitigate risk. Always have a plan B. Um, follow your plan A. Don't quit as long as you don't have to quit. But if something fails, if you fail too often in an exam or whatever and your university tells you to leave, you should know what to do then. Don't fall into a hole. Um, plan ahead. And look, get, get a job, get some internship, work as a working student, whatever. Get a job in a field where you work in afterwards too. So that you just, just can see, first of all, what are those guys doing? And second of all, how good am, am I in it? So what, am I good at that or not? Because the, the, the marks in your um, exams don't show you that. Uh, if they would have shown you, I would have sucked at my internship, but I didn't. Um, so just uh, get a glance, get a look into, into what you want to do in the end. And um, just enjoy studying then. You enjoy it much more. Uh, I didn't enjoy any of that until I did the internship. Before, I was very bad. And I was also bad at school, so I wasn't just lazy when I was studying. I was lazy before. So it was just normal to me. But one thing I wasn't was a quitter. And I would also uh, tell every one of you who struggles, who maybe doesn't know is it the right thing for me, don't quit. Go through it. Uh, look at what you really have to do. Look at the... Um, industry where you want to work in in the end. Get an internship. Do something where you know is that really right or wrong for me. And if you figure out during in one or two internships uh, that this is really the wrong choice, do something else. But if you figure out it's the right choice, it will give you a lot of energy to go through your studies because then you know what you achieve at the end. And for me, it was the best thing in the world doing this internship, actually, because otherwise my life would have taken a very different turn, I would say. I would probably still be finished at some time point with this and get a diploma, but I would have never done any PhD and I would also not have performed as good as I did in my job. I'm pretty sure about that. So what you can learn from me is look in the industry. And what you can also learn is, um, and something that I realized when I would choose today what I would study, what profession I want to learn. Uh, I would never choose electrical engineering anymore because for me, it, the risk would be too high. Uh, I had no insight, so no reconnaissance about what, what to do there. And I had uh, no idea if I was good at it. So from today's point of view, I would have never chosen it. So what you can learn is if you are young, if you if you maybe are a bit naive, you make choices that are high risk, but in the end high reward. So it was the right choice for me to choose it, even if I wouldn't do it today. And that is a bit uh, strange, of course, but it's um, it should help you that even if you struggle, even if you are young and naive or dumb or whatever, or you feel a bit naive or you don't think I don't know anything about the world, doesn't matter, go through it and you will conquer the world in the end and you will uh, most likely succeed. Don't quit, just go through it and, and fight uh, to become uh, a good student and a good engineer or a good business administrator or a good whatever. So I hope you learned something today. Um, I really like this video. If you liked it, um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have a good day. Goodbye.